As we mentioned earlier, the reaction to the Phase 1 China deal was positive. In fact, when it was announced, the markets were all up, wheat, corn, and especially soybeans, on the news that China would be buying billions in commodities. So we asked analyst John Roach the obvious question, which commodity was the biggest winner? That's a real good question. Uh, we don't know any of the details, and so knowing uh, who's going to, uh, uh, to get the best benefit is a little bit difficult. But what we think is that the soybean market, uh, a lot of the business that China has needed, they've come in and covered. And so there's just a small period of time between now and the harvest of the Brazilian crop before they uh, uh, will be back competing with us. And so, so where you'd think maybe beans would be the biggest benefactor, it may actually turn out to be a some, another commodity, and uh, um, but until we know details, it, it's just really kind of it's just really hard to, to know. Uh, the, it was interesting in that the meat markets were much stronger today, along with uh, the uh, uh, grain markets, oilseed markets, and even the energy markets and gold markets. So all these markets were all stronger. And part of what's going on is that the commodity index is moving higher, and as the index moves higher, it drags even the weaker commodities higher. More now on that farm labor overhaul. Recently, the House passed the Farm Workforce Modernization Act, a bipartisan bill designed for the most part to address the ag sector's chronic labor shortage. It generally has broad support, and if it's passed by the Senate and ultimately signed by the President, it could make it easier for undocumented farm workers to work year-round. On the other hand, the American Farm Bureau has objected to the bill in its current form, saying it doesn't give farm a real leg up toward profitability. We would like to see more changes to the wage methodology. We want to limit litigation exposure for frivolous lawsuits. We want to see real program access for year-round farmers. We don't want to see caps on a year-round program. We want any farmer anywhere in any type of agriculture to have access to the workforce that they need at a price that won't put them out of business. Farm Bureau says it's hopeful that a Senate version of the bill will be crafted that could address its concerns. In the meantime, other ag groups have expressed support for the House version, including the National Farmers Union. NFU President Roger Johnson issued a statement of formal support for the House bill. In his statement, he says, quote, our current farm labor system is badly broken. It's a time-consuming, convoluted, and restrictive process for farmers and ranchers who often don't have the time to spare, and it's a dead end for farm workers who currently have no straightforward path for longer-term employment or legal status. On the hills of the passage of the House version, Mississippi Ag Commissioner Andy Gibson issued a statement to Farm Week essentially agreeing with the Farm Bureau. He said it's too much of a strain on farmers. In that statement, he says, quote, migrant labor has always been a component of our country's and Mississippi's commercial agriculture. Changes to our current workforce laws need to not add undue burdens on our farmers and respect our immigration policies. Any final legislation needs to reach a consensus that I don't believe was achieved in the House version of the legislation. We'll be watching to see how the Senate proceeds on the issues. The farm labor overhaul passed in the House on December 11th. It has now gone to the Senate. There, California Senator Dianne Feinstein, a Democrat, has pledged her support. No word yet on who her Republican counterpart would be.